every good building starts with a set of plans. By studying reference images, I was able to transfer some of the basic shapes of the building I wanted onto paper and then onto some foam. This is just foam insulation that you get at any regular hardware store. It's easy to cut and I would recommend using the sharpest blade you have, fresh if possible. Here I'm just basically scoring out some of the marks that I'm going to need to make. I didn't want to damage any of the details I already added, so to remove the space for the windows, I worked very slowly. This area of the wall is going to have some damage. So I wanted to make sure that I could show that damage. So I removed as much of the foam as I thought I would need. It's gonna be refilled in later with some plaster to show the inside of the wall. But for now, I'm just making basic cuts so I know where everything is going to be located. Since this is going to depict the corner of a building, it's going to have two sides. Here, I just wanted to make sure that these two pieces of foam were going to be as secure as possible. So after I inserted some toothpicks, I glued them together with some PVA glue and clamps. This is gonna sit on the back wall of the diorama. So I just cut everything to fit. I used the roof line as a template, but I made sure that I cut down the inside of the template so it would fit the beams that I was going to put on so everything wouldn't get too tall. I also wanted to use a variety of materials to build this. So these styrene strips got the faux wood grain treatment just with a razor saw and I used just the blade of an X-Acto knife to give some variation to the scoring as well to show wood grain. The real wood sticks, I didn't need to texture them too much, but some of the smooth areas got that as well. Since I'm using mixed mediums here, I had to use CA glue. Once everything was dry, it was nice and secure. This project took a lot of planning and a lot of going back and forth, putting on a piece, taking it off, making sure everything fit, since there were so many different variables in how it was being built. This section here, I needed to add a beam to. It was a curved section. I figured it would be easier to be made out of styrene because it was easier to cut. Just little decisions like that. But all in all, if you only had wood and you only had styrene, you could make a very convincing build with just any material. I have these materials, so I use them. The building that I'm referencing has lath and plaster walls. It's pretty common for the time period and in France where this diorama is going to be set. I just used thin styrene strips to mimic the lath and I just went through and made all of the pieces oversized and cut them off after. It's pretty delicate so you definitely want to take some care when you're doing this process but again with the CA glue it holds up pretty well. It's okay if you damage something though because we're going to damage it. As I said in the beginning, and as you've probably seen by the thumbnail, this is a shelled out building. And the artillery shell came through, or the bomb came through the roof, damaged the roof, damaged the wall, and caused some of the plaster wall to collapse as well. If you'd actually like to take a look at the reference photo that I'm referring to, if you Google Carantan destroyed building, it's the one with the M7 priest in front of it. It looks pretty similar to what I've done, so you shouldn't be too hard to find. Truth be told, damaging all of this work I just did was 
actually one of my favorite parts of the entire build. It was really satisfying and it was fun trying to make the tears and breaks look interesting and not just so straight cut. Um, taking something apart like this, it was cool. It was, uh, it was cool to build the whole structure as it really would be so that all the little details would show through when it came time to destroy it. I figured I'd take this time to close up the back of the diorama. I thought a lot about this, leaving the gable section uh, see-through, but I thought with the back of the diorama, it was all going to be balsa wood, that this should have that same backing as well. Now it was time to make the damage of the impact on the floor of the building. And although this won't be seen very much, it was still fun to kind of work through all this process and um, just make some of that hidden detail. Again, tearing apart some styrene wood to make it look like it had been blown apart really held its uh, form really nicely and uh, I was really happy with how these styrene bits worked out. Saved on the little bit of wood I actually had, so it was great. I added a lot of texture up here and at first I thought it was weird to put sand there but since there's rubble and plaster and now bits of wood and brick yeah, it did actually work, and I think it's going to look great when it's painted, so add texture whenever you can. I originally was going to just try and detail these beams, but uh, the foam just wasn't... Uh, I couldn't get the wood texture in it the way I wanted to, so I made new ones out of small chunks of wood. Now it's time to put the plaster on, and this is just what it is. It's just plaster that you'd fix your wall with, drywall compound. And I'm just using a little sculpting tool to uh, lay it in place. And then I take a wet brush and stipple all the smaller detail into there. So it looks like it's just the right scale. Now for the plaster part of the lath and plaster walls. In the reference photo, a lot of that plaster was not blown free during the impact, and it was still stuck to the undamaged sections of the lath. So I added that and some stones at the base where the wall would have connected to the rest of the house and put everything back in place. So here is one of my favorite uses for the 3D printer. Now, of course, I could have tried to scratch build this entire piece on the roof as it was. But to have a very delicate piece on top of another very delicate piece uh, seems like kind of a disaster. Plus, this is YouTube modeling and things need to be done quickly and I could print this entire thing in a less than a day. So it's a win-win. Here, I'm creating roof tiles out of cosplay foam, EVA foam to be exact, high density. It holds texture really well and it cuts really easily. If you like roof tiles, and I think you do, sit back and enjoy this little time lapse. to Tinkercad, where we're going to build some windows for the corner side of the building. These are pretty complicated, and again, another great 
way to use a 3D printer is when the thing you're gonna be scratch building is a little bit fiddly. Um, I could have made these shutters out of, of wood and I could have made the frames out of styrene, but everything would be glued together and the slats wouldn't be the right scale and just everything about this makes it easier. And when you're in a big build like this, easy and faster is definitely the way to go. Burnout is real. Behind all those windows, I needed something to cover up the foam caverns. So I experimented with a little bit of PVA glue and paint and water, and I just used uh, common tissue paper, Kleenex, whatever you blow your nose with, something without a pattern on it because uh, I didn't think that would fit in the scale. Painted all the caverns black, so you couldn't see any of the pink foam behind them, and I hung up my curtains to dry. Now, I'm probably going to be repainting these. I might even redo them, uh, but for this video, uh, this was practice. I've never done that before, and I was pretty happy with the results, but not so much the color, but we'll see when the rest of the building is painted. For all the detail work, I used more of the EVA foam, and then use some bits of styrene with 3D printed elements for the lower windows. All of these windows are still removable, they're just pressure fit, so I can fix that later. I decided that the foam texture just wasn't quite enough for the plastered look that I was going for. Uh, in the reference pictures, there's definitely a lot more texture. Um, I experimented with a few different types of texture and ultimately I went with this. It might be a little thick for scale, but I don't think I'm going to be using the traditional washes on them, so that should be toned down more 3D printed objects that would be incredibly fiddly and fragile to build on my own with some gutters I reinforced from Night Shift's uh, Patreon, thanks to him. And I bent up another hole for wires. The wires will come at a later date, I think after the painting process, since I don't think they would survive that and that, that will give that a cool look as well. And the last bit was making a drain pipe for the gutter, and that was where I called it. I just wanted to take a second to say thank you to all the new subscribers and all the support we got on last week's video. It's been a really fun series to build so far, and I'm excited to show you more. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.